Good day, beautiful people and potatoes and anything else you identify with. I'm Potato. <laughs> I'm Potato. I'll be your host for this episode of the Triple SC Show. Woo! This show was filmed in front of a live studio audience. <clears throat> Before we begin, let's discuss the elephant in the room. We got a new mic! I'm kidding. This Today you can now see us all on the camera, which usually doesn't happen. We're usually just audio recorded, which is an upgrade thanks to somebody very special in the team. Her name is Cheryl, and she's dancing behind the camera. Alright, not only can you see me today, you can also see our guests. On the left, we have the beautiful Omar El Mahdi. Did I pronounce it right? He's from Egypt, representing Engineers Australia Club. Woo! Thank you for coming. On the right hand side, we have another beautiful individual. His name is Heflin Robin and he's from India. Woo! He is representing Swinburne's Automobile Club. Did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Before we begin, the word of the day. What's the word of the day? Labyrinth. <laughs> labyrinthine. <laughs> yes. Right. The word of the day is labyrinthine. And somebody who, one the, amongst the three of us, who uses the word most often will get a prize so in the end. What will that prize be? Can I just say it ten times really fast at the end? No, you <laughs> cannot. <laughs> it has to be times. <laughs> you have to, it has to be cumulative. But thank you for that effort. Anyway, <clears throat> so anyways, today's podcast is different. From now on, we've decided to do something different. What's going to happen is two clubs are going to go head to head. And when I say head to head, I don't mean head to head. I mean the head of the clubs are going to go against each other. Get it? Because it's the head of the clubs. Get it? It's a party. Yeah. We're your friends, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Head to head. Him. No, it's not like fighting. It's just because you're the heads of the club. Get it? So th what they're going to do is we're going to get to know each other. And then we're going to get to know each other on a specific topic. And by the end of the day, they're going to have to say if they do want to engage in a collaboration between the clubs or not. Sure. That is the goal of today's meeting. Sure, we can try. Sounds okay. Good, yeah. Thank you. Work something out. You guys are very easy to talk to. I like that. For you. Thanks. I don't get that a lot. Uh -huh. So, how are you guys doing today? Doing fine. Having thanks for the tea again. Without bubbles. Thanks for my bubble tea that has no bubbles in it. I thought that's what you wanted. I'm sorry. Really? Is it now? I don't explicitly remember asking or ordering bubble tea with no bubbles. I asked Omar. I just. Uh, am I Omar? <laughs> <laughs> but I did say. But thanks Omar. for the drink, though. Okay, you're welcome. And uh, you are going back soon. Yeah, Saturday. Are you excited? No, I mean, yeah, cause you know it's a funny story. I came here in March for my graduation in April. Then I came here. And you just never <laughs> went back. <laughs> the pandemic happened. Yeah, I came here. I got a place to stay for three weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna graduate wrap everything up, go back, and then Swinburne emailed me, like, they gradu they're canceling their graduation. And then MCO happened, and now I can't go back. And then three weeks become three months, it becomes six months now. Oh, so you're and finally then, going back for good now? Yeah. And you're never coming back? Probably, yeah. That's sad. It what is. about you, though? What are you up to? You have classes. That's why you told us about the permit that you had. Exactly. That's, uh, now I'm having my final semester. Oh, you're going to leave soon as well. <laughs> I'm not sure about that yet. This is a oh, very dramatic cool podcast then. Yeah. I mean, we still have until December, so let's, let's save the drama to December. Okay, got it. Okay. Got it. We'll get you more um, potatoes in December. We're looking much forward for so much activities this semester. Planning a lot of conferences for students to build up their engineering knowledge. Right. And, you know, like we split with them the career of as an academic, how you can actually excel after graduation, not necessarily work in the technical or administrative field. But yeah, again, uh, with the pandemic and everything, we're trying to shift to the virtual uh, learning. Yeah. And uh, yeah, from there we'll see how. We have like a plan for the next three months and hopefully we achieve at least half of it. Maybe oh. it still be a plus. That's good though that you guys planned. What I wanted to ask was that your clubs are both very scientific, very engineering based. Mm -hmm. 
Can a non-engineering student join? Will that be an issue? Totally, for us it's fine. It's not really... We don't really make club meetings and then ask everyone to come and uh, yo, today we will show how to... the history of uh, microchips, how was it invented, <laughs> you know? Uh, no, no, not really. It's more about social interaction. Uh, now mindsets are segregated by the what you study, right? True. Uh, that, that I study engineering, so I'm a more technical guy. Uh, I have approach and I try to build up my way through that approach. Others are more elaborative. So what you study usually makes you help, you know, it makes you profile the person in front of you in a way. And uh, we decided like before I became president of the club, it was just for me promoted to engineer. Right. But then if we organize events and we want people to handle our media, people to handle our PR, people to handle our posts, photography, all of, all of this. All the y'all. Yeah. We will need our teams, right? Yeah. So it will help us get more with each other and to know. Because one day you will work and one day you will work with people from different departments. It's right. not like you live with a, in a place, work in a place, and it's all artists or all scientists. You deal with different people. So trying to give that space was one of the reasons why uh, we started allowing non-engineering students also to join. And it's for free. Oh, it's free? Yeah, I think we're the only club until now we don't provide any... <coughs> I'm finding <coughs> it right now. Free too. <laughs> I did not know that. Oh, so yeah. you're done, sorry. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm just talking, so... <laughs> yeah, okay. You can juggle us in between, I'm not gonna... <laughs> what about you, though? Your club? Our or? club, actually, our club, it's not an academic club, like... Did not know that club. either. It's not an academic club. Our club, I would say it's more of a recreational club. It's basically a group of enthusiasts into cars and motorcycles. We basically... Uh, we are a platform for other you would say petrol heads in campus to socialize with, talk about cars or bikes or go out for drives or things like that. So uh, I, I can see how people might think we're an academic club, but we try to make sure we distinguish because we can be an academic club and we have, we have had a few events where we did touch into the academics of it. But then there were other clubs that came up that were more academic oriented mm -hmm. and that gave us an opportunity to stay true to what we wanted to be a recreational club because cars are something you can study a lot about but end of the day if you don't have passion for it then it's kind of it's kind of pointless and which is why you can be into business you can be into design and you don't need to learn every single thing about cars to enjoy them or appreciate them that's where our club comes in. You don't need to be an engineer. You don't have to have any background. Even if you like taking pictures of cars, but most of our members, they they don't even have yeah. yeah they don't even have a driver's license yet, <laughs> but they want to take pictures or they want to post it up on their Instagram or they want they have this portfolio things like that. So we're giving an opportunity to different different uh, car enthusiasts because. You could be a car enthusiast too. I mean, do you like a Ferrari? I like potatoes. <laughs> okay, if if there were to be a potato car, would you? Heck yeah, I'm getting in that. Right, place. right. So a potato mod. You know, yeah. Like, ooh. Like, you know, your car, and then suddenly you have like these wheel hubs that have, have potatoes on it. Oh, is it me? Is it getting hot in here? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. But uh, but you get my point, right? If tomorrow there were a potato car, you'd be into potato cars. Much. And our club. It's more than happy to create a potato car. I mean, I don't Design. know how it's gonna look like, a, but a potato, look really potato-ish. But but that's our whole purpose of the club. Right. Come hang out, learn more about cars, mm. things like that, and and it's free. Of course, it's free. I did not you know this. You've hit the jackpot today. Oh yes, definitely. Free, free, I'm free. signing up for both. <laughs> Wait, but you're leaving though. Yeah. Have you found your heir to your throne? Oh yes, the vice president. But Is but given the present circumstances and the present situation, our club has been very very Don't to be it. honest, since the beginning of this year. Pandemic, yeah. Pandemic. We haven't had uh, before I leave I wanted to have a final car show like the one we did in twenty sixteen. Twenty seventeen, eighteen? Seventeen. I think seventeen, right? Seventeen. Seventeen, yeah. Seventeen. That was a crazy car show. We had wow. about 
Was it during uh, Carnival? Yes. I was there. We had about 100 cars and 200 motorcycles. It was epic. Yeah. It was like Project X. You I know? saw it, yeah. Like, we just invited a handful of clubs, and the next thing you know, so everybody, everybody <laughs> comes in and they just, call yeah, their friends. Literally, they call. That's literally what happened. It was good. I saw it. I didn't know you guys were behind it, though. Oh, that was us. It was me and Omar. It was me and Omar. Guys! That's when oh we, we literally started the club, and... At that at that at that time, Omar he had no position in the club, but he really helped me out at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out of the you know the the pure passion because every year the carnival used to be used to happen in swimming, but it yeah. was pretty boring. People just come with food stalls and that's it. Potatoes, food, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no potato story it comes every year, you know. Yeah. So True. when he came up with the idea, this he was he was so into it. He it was the year that he actually established his club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was gonna be a really way good way to launch his club inside this inside swim room. And I was like, man, I'm down. And it was me, him, and a bunch of guys with cars and bikes and, and swim room. We tried to contact everyone, you know, so on Facebook groups. Wow. Here, here, here. He managed to get uh, offloaders. He managed to get uh, guys from our uh, from the Honda Civic Club, right? He managed to get, get all the bikers. Tried to contact bikers around like here and there. It was it was it was pretty memorable, you know, like until this day when when I would show it to newcomers and tell them like you know this is uh, yeah. this is how we did our carnival one of the days. It's it's. it's yeah, I mean, really we like, had a Ferrari show up, but yeah. we don't know whose Ferrari it was. That's <laughs> so just a Ferrari just showed up and you know, and we didn't even invite them. There was so much energy that uh, on that particular day, like we, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's I don't think. I don't think the next five, six years in Swimmer and anything like that will ever happen again. I tr that was actually my first introduction to Swimmer. Oh, really? It was my first semester here in Foundation and I saw that happen. I thought it was going to be like that now, you know, because of you beautiful women. Of course. And you're going to leave soon? I mean, dude, remember we got the Bonio super bike yeah. club and then... Dude, they came with a truck so <laughs> filled with bikes so just to show it off. So uh, I don't know no. how we got the con I think it was from him or somehow we got the contact right and then we just contacted them asking them oh by the way we had this event you guys wanna the uh, lady bikers group oh the lady <laughs> those buff ladies <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah I gotta tell you that I gotta tell you that okay so so before the Bonio Super Bike right okay now there was these group of bikers they come in right and then we're trying to manage the traffic flow we're asking showing them way to park and things like that mm -hmm. and then there's like a bunch of huge ass bikers they come in and then. We're pointing them like, oh yeah, park over here, park over there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, 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 can you park over there? Ah, oh, thank you, bro. And then they take off their helmet. And then it's a, it's a chick. Okay. It's, a, it's a lady. Okay. It's like someone's mom, you know? And she's so huge and she has this big ass bike and like crazy. And they're and not just like five, six women yep. in a club. Wow. It's, it's, it's a the society. Yeah. They have their jerseys, uh, their flags. That's so cool. They have the badges, not just them, and and badges like and vests. It, it, it's a culture. It's a community. That's what the core of the club is about. It's not about Very welcoming. Yeah, it's 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 all about what you want to do to the machine itself. You know, you present your personality in some extent, and that's what they're here for. Do you know how to ride a bike? I have a motorbike. I don't know I travel. How. I travel to Sarawak on my motorbike. Damn. That is cool. I cool. don't have a bike. I've you always wanted to go there. there. Yeah, <laughs> it's still there, but it's still there. Like three years now, it's still there, bro. What is that? Uh, you're into potatoes, right? Yes. I'm into donuts. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the, the kind, the yeah. Okay. No, I like to miss it all. Yeah, when you're having the carnival. So the is that how you got the scar? Yeah, scar. Doing a donut? No. Oh. <laughs> other, other, other adventures. Okay. Uh, it was donuts. quite unfortunate, though. You know, like uh, just hit into a car okay. oh. at an intersection. So no mud is cold usually. But yeah, yeah. Back to the fun part. Sorry. Yeah, back to where the donut is. Right. Yeah, I wanted to represent Swimburn because everybody coming from outside clubs and they're like drifting inside Swimburn and parking and all that. Mm -hmm. Great. Hefe, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and then just came in, made like a big ass circle with my butt, with my bike, and it's been there, you know, like now it's a bit faded, but the circle is there. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah. I want to see it later. Sure. Take five. We will be back after five minutes. Welcome back everybody, we're back with our drinks. Somebody else finished their drinks real quick. His hand is empty now. That's really nice. <laughs> I, I bet. Know, you had no problem. Couldn't bubbles. resist it. 
<laughs> yes. So, um, I was going to talk about how cars have evolved so much over the years. Mm, exactly. I think the first yeah. car was, I did research by the way. Model T? 1885. I wrote it? it down. Okay, right. 1885 by Carl Benz. Do you guys know who Carl Benz is? Yeah. Is he the guess? Mercedes Benz guy? Yes. Yeah, of course. Look at you, star <laughs> student. Yeah. High it's five yourself. First, I can't do first, it. The first, pandemic. First automobile, yeah, was great by Carl Benz. Yes. That was Model T by no, the, the first road car was Ford Model T. Actual uh, first production for like an actual car with the steam wheel and all the components that was Model T, right? was the one Model T at the Ford what was special about this car is that he uh, he was given a patent for this car because it was the first car that could run on its own without you know back in the day they had this Flintstone car where you yeah, carry the, a rock the, and the, the legs would still the, the, run the, the you're patent, still doing work the, the patent was that it's a it's a like a carriage that can drive itself yeah it wasn't even recognized as a car yet at yeah. that time it was called a wagon, I think. A yeah, wagon, wagon with their accent. Yeah. And in wagon. German, in wagon. Like a Volkswagen. Yes. Nine, Sorry, nine, getting nine distracted. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to cut that out. <laughs> it was a really good joke. Anyhow, <laughs> when you look at uh, the last 200 years, yeah. cars, cars were purely mechanical. They literally ran on steam. Mm. And slowly, slowly, you saw the development of how their approach was yeah first we need to drive create something that can drive its own we've created that now let's create something that can run faster let's make it more efficient let's make it more comfortable let's make it more spacious yeah now cars are becoming so smart that the in the next 10 15 years there will be countries like totally depending on self driving cars in terms of logistics yeah. like the best way to actually apply that is logistics the the big trucks that travel for 16, 18 hours a day on the road. Mm. Germany is building new highways that dedicated for these self-driving trucks. Well, that's interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. And that all comes under the concept of introducing AI into yeah. the car. Before having AI, you would introduce the electronic aspects of, you know, like a car having a computer. You know, yeah. when you're like, it's a computer's car. You diagnose it, you check it. But these are all pre-programmed control systems for you to monitor what's happening inside the car. Now the car can learn and adapt like a baby. You don't, you're, you're, you're born, you start crawling and then walking and then running. Mm -hmm. But you already have the basic instinct of knowing what you, your motor abilities, right? right? So now cars, they can drive themselves, they can park themselves. But they, you can't really say 100% I'll take the car from the dealership and uh, put my home, dis my destination on the maps and it will just drive itself. It will know the direction, mm -hmm. but it will not know how the road looks like, how bumpy is it, what's the traffic flow around you, how much they have to like be more aware at this area of the road, be less aware at this area of the road. That's where machine learning comes in, right. you know. In between, in between having the cars being electronic and efficient and having AI now, there's something called like active control systems. Active control systems. These are, these are more like scanners. Let's scan the road. Let's say the road is bumpy. Ah, I know that. Yeah. So there's a there's a camera that scans the road in front of it. Right. And the, the computer of the car processes everything that adjusts the suspension that you wouldn't actually feel the bump. Right. That's something like uh, the sonar scanners that they use. So More or less. But you see, it's a problem for us because we like to drive cars. But then, if the car wants to drive itself, then I was just gonna say because right? yeah. I like driving. I don't know much about like, cars. I like can look like at driving. an engine and tell yeah. you what the components but are, but I, I don't know cars. Right? It comes from. Think about yeah. it, right? Cars have evolved to this point because of humans, as in what we want. For yeah, example, easy. exactly. If you think about it, right? In the fifties and sixties, cars were huge. They had really big engines, and the reason being is because fuel was so so cheap back then. And then when the Japanese, when they lost the war, they couldn't afford to have big engine cars because mm -hmm. they were on a crisis. So they made the small little cars with smaller engines. Economical like cars. Economical cars. And then when US, when they hit the oil crisis in the 70s or 80s. That's when the Japanese market cars exactly, boomed everywhere. That's where the Japanese cars came up everywhere because okay. people can't be spending like $10 a gallon or something. And then the Japanese cars are small fuel efficient vehicles so like i said cars evolve based on humans right and now it got to a point that there's a lot of cars a lot lot of people and commuting commuting every day one hour is the norm in many cities even in malaysia in kuala lumpur 
commuting back and forth to work and school is at least an hour hours commute so in that case would you want to be spending your time at the steering wheel driving for an hour or would you let your car take over and you do what you want to do probably even if it's insta or tiktok or facebook or whatever you you you're, you're disconnecting your brain you don't want to stay alert all that time you're already exactly. tired yeah had a long day of nine to eight working hours or probably you could even work while you're if the, when the car is driving yeah you could be on your laptop you can do something you know like use that time yeah the you know that bridge in san francisco the the, the i don't the the golden bridge. golden gate bridge, golden yeah, gate bridge yeah. yeah the architect who built that uh, mm -hmm. that bridge before the bridge the people used to take a very long detour behind the valley and go there so then the architect built that bridge between the two valleys and then he was like, it saves around like what, two or two, three years of lifetime of yourself just to avoid that commute. So imagine the amount of time you spend. Every I live in Kuching and sometimes it would take me over 30 minutes to reach campus. And it's like, right here, just because of the traffic. Right. Imagine what you can do all of that during that traffic before people like, enjoy your audiobooks. Because you, you can listen to something while driving. Imagine if now the car can drive itself. You could be revising you for your exams. exams. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. doing something in that traffic. But then, now there is an interesting thing to talk about now. Before the introduction of self-driving cars and really intelligent hybrid systems, people were like, we need that. Imagine if we have it, be nice. Then Tesla really excelled in self-driving. They're the first cars that actually go into production where you can rely on them self-driving. But then when it first started to come out, cars would crash. Yeah. Why would car crash? You have to understand the concept behind that. Like I told you earlier, you're teaching the car how to drive. You're providing it the, the basic instincts of motor abilities, of sensory abilities. That doesn't mean it can drive straight away right. What if that par particular portion of the road was under construction? But the car is not programmed for it. It doesn't know. Why would you blame the car? Now, AI, that's where AI fixes the problem. AI is basically your brain always being attentive. If you see that barrier, you will move away from it. So that's what these cars are. But it's just like, you have to be patient. I mean, it took 200 years for people to put air conditioning in a car. And now that, 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 that technology introducing, making cars smarter and allowing AI to be there, voice commands, gesture command, can do things with the car, inside the car by gestures without even touching it. And then now people try to attack the creators of this technology. Right. And that's the responsibility of the user. That they should really understand it's it's something that won't really you would you didn't come up in the 90s with a phone that has touch screen right the phone was bigger than the cup you need to own a phone you must be like some dealer of some of something to yeah. actually own a phone but yeah it's it's just all about patience and understanding for someone to say that this this technology is wrong or it's unsafe I can't even start a debate with him for him saying that, you know? Right, right Hefli? It just mm. takes time to progress. I would, I, would, I would say that self-driving cars, it'll become the new norm. And then people like us, the car enthusiasts, now that's going to be a luxury sport. For example, you look at horses, right? Mm -hmm. Before, riding horses was the norm and everyone was doing it. And then when cars came into the picture, people started driving cars, horses kind of, no one really cared about updated. horses. But then, people who like riding horses, it become a luxury sport. And until right now, there are people horse riding and things like that. And same thing would come to cars. It would be the new norm where everybody has a car that will drive itself. Everybody. And then, the select few who actually want to drive their own cars, they will get to a point that they can only do it in close strangers, things like that. And the thing about automotive, um, I mean the AI and things like that, right? So. What Omar said was right. Now, when you're driving a car, subconsciously, you're looking at the, at the side view mirror, then you're switching lanes, and then it goes to a point that you're not even thinking about driving. It's like you're... Innate. Exactly. It's like almost, I would say, a human instinct at this point that there are times where... You're in sync. Yeah. You're basically in sync. Like you know? you're thinking about something, or you're having a thought, or you're talking to, your, to somebody. Or you're doing something, right? But... You're still driving, your body is still doing all of it. And for a car to do all of it by itself, of course, like Omar said, you need machine learning, you need AI, you need like thousands of different sensors to sync all the data in and bring it up. 
But then if you think about it, humans are unpredictable. But machines are not. So if you have a whole street filled with exactly auto- no, automated cars, I get what you're you saying. You know what I'm saying, right? If, if one automated car in a, in a, in a space of 20 non-automated car, it'll always be bound to a mistake. But when you have the entire lot self-driving cars, they are all gonna it's be sync. connected to each yeah. other. There will be one day that infrastructure, I that, didn't think about that this cars thing. would literally detect each other, you know? Dang. Because they would be control systems that this is a car, this yeah. is a car. Because they all have, how, how, like for example, that power plug. All, all plug, right? Yeah. It's universal, right? Yes. All electronic devices using the same plug so that you can plug it anywhere. The same thing will go to that car. There will be some components inside the car that will become so universal between other manufacturers. And they can communicate between yes. cars, things like that. A, an actual happening example now. Yeah. Electric vehicles. Mm-hmm. All the electric vehicles now are unifying the charging out uh, ports. So you can use it anywhere in the world. So yeah, any 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 no, it's charging like, it's station. Like smartphones, yeah. They all have the exact same charging. They all port. have like USB Type C or Lightning despite port the for brand. Uh, despite the brand. The to be the same why so any owner of electric vehicle can charge his car it's at any iPhone. it's android <laughs> Continue. Can, yeah. can 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 park the can can charge their car at any power station and that's what tesla is doing now right elon musk is trying to uh standardize the charging port mm-hmm. because he wants to be creating power grids all over the states and all over the world right so and you can actually beat traffic as well now now hear me out right let's say you're in a traffic light the light turns green right and then you might notice that way back that your car is still stationary because the guy, the car in the front is going to move and then the car behind him is going to move and then the car behind him is going to move. There's a delay. So there's a slight delay if you notice. And by the time it's your turn, it's only a solid 10, 15 seconds. It's like when you, you move. have you seen yourself in the queue at traffic light, right? Yeah. It's green, but you're still stopping. Yeah, yeah, because the car in front of you. They didn't shift their gear. Exactly. Yep. Now, if you just picture a scenario where all the cars are automated, and they all can speak to like each other. Like if it's man. Yeah, they would all, <laughs> when it turns green, they would like, all... Oh, girl, it's your turn. They'd whisper to each other. Exactly, and when it turns green, they all would move together in sync. Have you watched Futurama? No. Okay, have you seen those... Uh, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a series in the future, but basically, like, you know how you see uh, movies or series in the year 3000 or in the very, very far future, and you yeah. see all the cars floating? They all move together, they all stop together, a bunch of cars move together at the same time. Like a flock. It's not, yes. yeah, it's not one after, after the other, after the other. Mm. That's under the sink area. So when you yeah. say that cars are unsafe at the moment, it's because you're not putting them in the right environment, we're still testing. We are literally, we're literally still testing. But when you implement it mm-hmm. on a bigger scale, that's it. You know, human brains think the same, right? That's why we're synchronized in the street. So when you have an artificial intelligence or an electronic brain thinking together, they would also be synced. They would be more efficient. They would be faster. Well, dominance. Well, I guess you could say it's a very labyrinthine, labyrinthine. topic. No, I said it. You don't get the luck. I, I said it. Sir, what do you think, man? What you said, labyrinthine? I said yeah. it more than you now. I said labyrinthine three times. I said it again. <laughs> labyrinthine. Oh. Stop it! It doesn't count, I think. Does it, it does. count? Well, sure it does. I don't know. Okay. So what you guys have done so far is you've already covered the necessity for AI. because, And you've also talked about the social aspect of it. Now, yes. I can only talk about this from a business perspective. Mm. When we okay. learn business, we get, we've get we studied this new, new, new unit that tries to update us mm-hmm. because they talk about how the market has been more economic-based, so it prioritized the economy more than it does society. I think and it is true. It is I, definitely true. I disagree, true. man. I would agree to that, honestly, because, I mean, Malaysia is a very, very, very good example over here mm. because... If you were to graduate, and if you're earning about two to three k per month, and if you only qualify for a loan to get a, I would say, a Maybe or an Asia, that's your limitation. You're, you're you're physically, financially only limited to that set of options. Now, there's a self-driving car, like a Tesla. Yeah. A Tesla is not fully self-driving, but to a point, yeah, but. Could you afford it? No, you can't because you don't qualify for that loan because it's a much expensive car. So eventually, the technology will, like Which airbags, you? for instance. Airbags back then were only for luxury cars and oh. fancy cars. Yeah. And then, I don't know 
until it became a law. Yeah, because the technology was very, very expensive. And then as it got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, as countries started enforcing laws that your car, if you want to import it into our country, it does have, need to have seat belts and airbags. That's when manufacturers started adopting it. You and same an thing with, an with what you said, what your unit said is right. Yeah, right now, at least in Malaysia, the car market is based more towards economical than technology and things like that. I would say it depends on the country, to be honest. Yes, I was Some, going to say that. It's just like, don't you live in Malaysia, if you buy Tesla, yeah, so you're, not, yeah. you're not really using the, the car worth its money to its full potential. Right. But if you live in the US or Canada, you buy Tesla, you will not feel that deficiency of not finding an, an electric station to it's over there, it's already yeah, happening, it's you know? Yeah. So, like they're saying, like, the, more, the more technology just readily increases, yes. the price will drop. Yeah. Um, eventually, eventually, your MyV or your ATM might be self-driving. Mm -hmm. I mean, not today, not tomorrow, but somewhere down the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because yeah, this technology will get more mind, affordable. You know? Yeah. It has it's like, like this collision assistance, it has all these like things that were not there in the previous generation yeah. mind. Yeah. But when you look at another brand of another car, you find that particular option has been there in the car for previous, previous model. So breaking it down to the economy just depends on how the country is willing to embrace that technology and how can they like implement it at a cheaper manner. Do they have the resources right. to have this to, to create this technology now for a cheaper price or not? Yeah, totally. I hear you. What I was gonna say was that the what I was gonna say was that I agreed with you guys that the AI mm -hmm. incorporation in two cars mm -hmm. was what was the correct word? Was adhering to the social responsibility aspect of the new market, mm -hmm. which is what we're supposed to be doing as the current age of you the business. You should be embracing people. technology. You should always be like yeah. welcoming it. Yes. So, because you guys also talked about how the cars change with the people. Yes. Yeah, so that's how it's actually to do with it the people. people's society. demands. Before, yeah. having a car was about luxury and, and, and you know, how yeah. you look like. It's style. Right. It's, it's status symbol. Status symbol, exactly. Right. What it represents to you. Well, yeah. Yeah, then it became into the introduction of the modern world. Mm. You have a car, it must have, does, does your car? Have a camera. Does does your car have like electric windows? Right. Hey, look at this. I have airbags in my car. You know. Then it became to the fact where it becomes more economical and cheaper. To now want it to be more smarter and safer. Okay, got it. And we're gonna take another five minute break. Five minutes. Huh? Five minutes. Got it. Yeah, I was just about to wrap okay. up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Keep going. Okay, <laughs> what I was gonna say was you guys have pretty much covered the whole thing. But what my final question for this session mm -hmm. which you guys have been beautifully mm -hmm. flowing through and making me feel very comfortable thank you for that is the consequences of using ai into cars like you talked about how initially like it's like treating like taking care of a baby but at the end of the day a parent will get into um will be blamed for negligence if they were allowed were yeah. allowed they allowed their baby to walk on the balcony and then fall off but you have knives at home no right? yeah do you stab people with the knife you have or you use it to cook, to eat, to <laughs> cut your food? Yeah, I use it to cut my food. It's all about how you use the thing. Totally. You know? so but there is a lot of moral dilemma. For Blimp example, yes. let's, let's example you have a self-driving car yeah. and something know? happens and your car kills kills a baby, uh, not a baby, sorry. Kills, uh, kills a dog. Yeah, kills right? a dog. Yeah. Kills a dog. Then, then who gets the blame for it? The owner of the car? Or the car or manufacturer, the, the car manufacturer, yeah, that's or the guy who, yeah. or the guy who programmed the car. Mm -hmm. So who do you blame? Yeah, or the person who holds the patent, the patent. Exactly. I mean, yeah. in the perfect oh. world, oh. the car would never kill the dog. In a perfect world, but sadly, we don't live it's in a perfect, perfect world. world. Yeah. Exactly. It's all about no, nobody. No, you know, like we humans like attraction. Yes. We like we like the potatoes. We like new things. The new right. thing, yeah, the happening thing. You know what's yes. the trend going on? So. When, when 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 you find these people who are against you know like the technology yes and that the car killed the dog they will go like look at this they'll make like on social media on tv you know right. a national crisis so then people will be, like, will be like nobody wants to take the blame for it yeah so the consequence of that that we can't progress you can't progress can't you're progress. always finding someone to blame they yeah. want to find someone to blame and no one wants to be blamed and there is nothing to be blamed about for 
If you were driving your own and you killed a dog, would even know, would anyone care? Would someone make a fuss about it? About a dog? Or try to blame you for killing the dog mm-hmm. while driving? I mean, I feel if, bad. <laughs> you dog. feel bad, yeah. Well, we, That's natural. Bad. But is it going to reach the point where we need to find who's responsible for that technology? Or, or is it too premature? Is, yeah, is it too premature for true. us to implement this technology? It's not safe yet. Mm-hmm. It killed the dog now. It can kill humans later. Yeah. You kill the dog now, you might hit a human later also. That is true. That's okay. how I'm seeing it. You know, that's I how I see it. I did not see, see it. that. You're right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're learning. Yeah. And it's not a perfect world. It's never 10 out of 10. What do you think? If? I think. I think. If a car kills a dog, it's a pretty bad car. What but if a car kills a human though? Exactly my yeah. point. So, of course, we can, we can bring it to the mainstream public right. if it even kills like if it's a dog because like what what he said, if it kills, people were gonna talk down on it anyway, like what he said, right? Mm-hmm. It killed a dog today, tomorrow it's gonna kill a human being, things like that. It's all valid. It's all definite, but. We can't really bring out the technology until we're so sure that it's not going to kill a dog even. But Hefton, at the same time, there are some things that we can't really make sure that they're working fine until you really put them to the ro- you know, the actual real test. Of course, of course, of course. I, I, I know it's more of, like we're talking about trial and error. Yeah. This technology is also trial and error. Exactly. But we need to come up with a balance because trial and error in this technology can also be very fatal. It can also have serious consequences on human life. I mean, you know how heavy a car is, right? And car that heavy, driving 100 kilometers per hour in traffic with human beings inside, if anything goes wrong, it can be very fatal. But I'm not disregarding what Omar said, as in that it can kill a dog, so shut down the technology. Of course not. But the engineers need to come up with a lot of layers of protocols. So if things go down, you have redundancies. Exactly. If that goes on, this happens, this happens. Which is why, right now, if we have such a technology, there should always be a human driver who is always alert, at least right now. Right? Yeah. Like, you, it is a self-driving car. You can relax, but you but still I have to pay attention I won't, to... Yeah, I won't, I won't, like, hold my newspaper or sit on my laptop and let it just do its thing. Exactly. I need to teach it. Like, we earlier it's said, you need to teach it. It's programmed. Right. It knows the way. Mm. It will definitely send you if there are no roads and no obstacles in the car. Right. But you must be there always to teach it, to let it know. Uh, like, you know, like some cars help you, there is steering assist. Yes. You literally be steering the car and the thing will fight against you, you know? It will fight against. Yeah. Don't fight back. Follow the flow. Let it guide it, not follow. It's guide it. You, 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 the collision assist, when you're driving and there are cars give you the option to set the distance between you and the car in front of you. Right. So when you're there and you're driving, don't drive too fast. Don't 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 attack. Always drive defensively. You know, right. until until things get slowly. And then it's like you have a kid. You put him on your lap, teach him how to drive, and then slowly slowly you make him sit on the driver's seat alone. And then slowly slowly you take him out on the street. Mm. Then you finally leave him alone. You know. People ah oh, self driving cars zero to a hundred straight away. That's that's where they're missing, you know, like, there are limitations, you have to take it slow, right, dude? But what about you, Potato? Yes. As in, let's say you're going to go to Damai. Yeah. Well, you want to go in a self-driving car or you want to drive yourself in Damai? I definitely want to drive myself. Right? Yeah. So, people are different. What I want is different. What you want is different. Yes. And what Omar wants is different, right? Yeah. But in the perfect world, all three of us can coexist, right? But... If tomorrow if people force me to drive self-driving cars, I might fight it. But it might also be for the greater good. For in the, the future. For the community. 50, 60 years ahead. For the society. Okay. Things like that. So I think, end of the day, this technology is something you can't fight. It will happen. You can it's delay it. You can slow it down. Even speaking in terms of econom- economics, right? Even yeah. if people can't afford it right now. One day they will afford for it. For sure. Maybe. One day down the line, everyday people can afford such... It will become a necessity. It will become what you need to survive. Right. Do you ever think that there will be a time when the demand always supersedes the the, the supply, though, for these cars? I mean, uh, the car industry is one of the industries that could almost always keep up with the demand. Right. Because, like we were talking about the first car, right? Ford. 
since then until right now for Toyota, they pioneered these car productions. It's much people, you know, they make more cars per second than people make burgers. Okay. At this point, Apologies. so so my point being is supply and demand for cars specifically. There's always demand for cars. Every year, there's even though. Even though we have a lot of newer cars in the market, older cars are still going out. So it's like an equilibrium. Old cars go out, new cars come in. There's always demand for new cars. But supply is something we we haven't had a problem yet. When was the last time you heard there's no more Toyota Camrys or there's no more yeah. Mivys? Because the, the automobile industry is definitely one of the more efficient ones. Exactly, because yeah. they pioneer the technology of productivity and stuff like that. Okay. I guess we've had a very intellectual labyrinthine conversation i think i think you should today. sit and you, it would be good for you to sit and self drive your car you will eat your potatoes and i would be too scared yeah. i will it, like you said it's like taking care of a baby i'm pretty sure you heard this a lot I but cannot. what's the story behind the potato yeah uh, the potatoes yeah, yeah. yeah what's the story behind it i really like potatoes they're beautiful no no when did you decide how did it make a potato? how did it have an effect on your whole personality and your name no, it, no how, how did it start off I was 12. And why? Nobody could pronounce my name. <laughs> That's how it started. I was 12. Nobody could pronounce my name. And so I said potato. So just that was my first question. Do you like potatoes? And that was the first thing they remembered. And hence it became my name. Oh. Yes. But That's we just it. caught up. But I don't like mm. potatoes. But I like french fries. So. So. I. 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 I so pass the same thing. french fries. Oh. And mojis. <laughs> and I give you potatoes. It's, 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 the, it's the upgrade now. Right. So with that, we should actually wrap up the chat. So As you can tell, our so people at the back when, are shivering. When, when can I tell my mom about the video so she can watch it and send it to my auntie? We'll whatever. let you know after we, <laughs> we cut this. Scene. People are panicking at the background. Can you see them doing the T sign? Okay, yeah. I don't even know. Is this timeout? Is that what it means? Timeout? I don't know. No, yeah. Yeah. Someone's doing the dead that's, sign. Got that's, it. That's con okay. concrete. Is it sign. part two? <laughs> Hold up. So, as you can tell, this is next week. chill. No, you won't be here next week. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that should be nice for a peep, you know, because he yeah. won't be actually here. He's like, oh, damn. And it should definitely be a part two. Well, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> AI in cars is the future and it should be embraced. We have to take care of it like a baby. And uh, did I say that right? It's happening and it's inevitable. Inevitable. You can't fight it. You can't join it. fight it. You it's have like Terminator. To... Yeah. Join. Be part of it. Join the dark side. Embrace it. And we're going to get killed by AI. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Before we end the podcast, the word of the day winner is... Labyrinth fine. Me, of course. Do you know who the winner is? Yeah. It's me. Is it? Yeah. I said labyrinth fine the most. I'm saying it right now. Okay. Well, if that's the case, you get a prize. What is it? And it's a potato. Although, but because it's our first show, I feel bad for you. So, you so I'm get being one consolidated? Too. Yes. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. This is very... You want to you take mine? Hey, thanks, dude. I have two potatoes. No, take it back to India with you. I'll sell it back, back to back. someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's value is higher in India, yeah, though, right? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it French fries. 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 I'm not going to India. I'm going to Doha. Right. My bad. Cut that out, too. With that, we've pretty much reached the end. Right. And last but not least, do you guys agree that your clubs will continue to collaborate? Yes or no? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You have are now. We have, are we gonna have a podcast like this again? You have thus witnessed the unholy matrimony of two clubs. With that, we will end the podcast. Thank you so much when, for joining when us do we today. Kiss? Yes, you may now kiss the bride behind the scenes. And thank you. Thank you.